To have a good harvest, one must plant good seeds and must also use the right kind of fertilizer. The carrots have grown large and firm. How good they will taste. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all the gardeners and homesteaders across the world. Whether you do it in your backyard or your front yard, we are here just for you. And today, we're going to take a look on the inside. And we are going to see if what we do, in fact, hurts our garden. There's things that we do that sets us back. You know it's true. Don't you, Batavia? Yes. <laughs> you want to you want to listen to in- instant regret? Rewind yeah. five seconds and then listen to my answer. <laughs> That's instant regret. Yeah, there's. I mean, you know, it's tough because we think that we're doing something good all the time, and that's just not the case. You know, it definitely. There's things that I can remember that have set me back in my garden, have, you know, limited my production, all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. And it, it's hard to come to that realization. Well, I, I think that in, during the season, while I generally I think I am, I've realized that I'm a little hard on myself. During the season, I'm moving so fast where I don't have a whole lot of time to, you know, kind of sit with whatever it is. So mm-hmm. I just keep on moving, right? And there's most times especially with the size of your garden or mine, even if there's something that you stumbled on that was by your hand, there's something else that's going to go well. And you can kind of you know, yeah. stuff that other, that other filling down. Uh, but we don't normally do this kind of episode during the season, right? Is no. that fair to say? Yeah. yeah. No, this is like something we would talk about in winter. But, I mean, let's be honest. We're coming up onto the third season of the year. You know, a lot of people are starting their fall gardens. And, I mean... I would be okay to kind of gear it towards that too. Like, cause that's actively what I'm doing in my garden right now is I'm getting ready for fall and I'm doing things. I know what I've done in the past and I mean, it works for every season. It doesn't really matter. So, um, it's just, it's like I said, it's difficult, but what's not difficult is helping support our show through either Spotify or Apple subscriptions, or you can check out our t-shirts and all that stuff below. So check out all, all of the links, and then that's not difficult to do. So help us out. Keep the show on the road. That being said, all right, so I'm a Southern gentleman, and I'm going to allow the lady to choose if she wants to go first this time, because I'm even taking my gentleman to another level. I'm going to let you choose. So um, this year, similar to previous years, I'll start at the beginning of starting fall seeds. Yeah. So taking for granted, there are two things. There's one I'm experiencing now and then two that I generally experience with this. So not starting them on a schedule that you probably have identified. And the second bit is taking for granted that once you start something, it'll just be fine. Um, And so like, you know, not, accounting for you may need to restart some seedlings maybe they don't take off maybe some die right and the window is a little bit tighter right there's not it's not as forgiving for me um now the truth of the matter is as of this podcast recording and i wish we would have done this next week i've not started (laughs) not a single not a i have had a seed tray with soil in it for a month that i've moved from my back deck I've moved underneath my little uh, like lawn furniture under the back deck. I've moved it to my dining room table. I've moved it to my kitchen right next to the back door. I moved it under the table. And not a seed has been sown in any of those sales. So, so one or two the... things are going on. Mm-hmm. You're either playing hide and seek with your seed tray or you've worked out this weird workout routine where you're just lifting seeds as weights, uh, seed trays as weights. Which one is it? So I'm clumsy. So I've actually <laughs> taken time to sweep up some of the, the soil that's fallen as I've like stumbled, moving it back and forth. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you offline kind of one of the um, my Achilles heel around this, but. I remember distinctly saying a month ago today, one month ago today is when I thought I was going to, I was, if I started seats, then I was late at this point. (laughs) It's too late now. (laughs) 
So now I'm all like, oh, I'll just direct so and pretend as if there isn't a reason that you start these things indoors, you know, early. But hey, I also have separate and apart and part of my justification. I have seedlings that are root bound that uh, I'm going to transplant in for fall. And I'm going to pretend as if that was a part of my plan all along. Well, so first of all, I have video proof in my phone that you're clumsy and I was going to pull it up to embarrass you, but I'm not going to because it's just way far back. I need to like save it on my phone and put yeah, it on like on my screen saver. <laughs> I have a new pair of boots that have treads on them, so I blame it on the boots last time. Okay, we'll, we'll leave it at that. But, um, you know, I agree with you, especially in fall. I find it difficult because... The garden's growing and it's going well. And I get a sense of malaise, shall we say, where I'm just like, you like that word, didn't you? Big word. Fancy. Fancy day. Today's a lucky day, Mm -hmm. y'all. And I just get kind of, you know, lazy and complacent with what's going on in my garden. And I don't know if I've told you this publicly or not, but... I have in the fall the same problems you have with seeds in the spring. And I figured out that it's the temperature and, you know, the starting temperature for these seeds um, where they just they come up and then they die. They Mm -hmm. come up and then they die. And I really struggled and fought it hard this year. Um, And it kind of made me look at it. But, you know, when I start them in the spring, I feel like I can basically start it. And it'll just kind of grow itself. But in the fall, I really have to baby my seedlings a little bit more. And it, it's a pain because I also don't have a full rack of seeds going either. You know, it's it's a lot less. So it's, it's you know, and I have a whole garden to take care of and a podcast to film or record and a YouTube channel to do. And I'm in the garden, so it's hard. So I, I get it. And it, I don't know. Is it is it being lazy? Mm hmm. You think so? That's yeah, that's hard to hear. Well, it's being oh goodness, it's being lazy, and it's also there's a bit of so lazy she drooled uh, on herself. Everybody, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, huh. Thanks for telling everyone. I appreciate that. Um, but it's also um, kind of uh, like looking at the shiny thing, being distracted by the shiny yeah. thing, which is your garden, which is all that's happening with your garden. Um, and I've I've been there, and I continue to do it year over year. It's kind of like. Um, I need to figure out if I could get these tomatoes processed. I can't stop and sow some lettuce seeds. Like it sounds ridiculous when you say it out loud, uh, but you know how, the, how I like to make things a production. There is this bit, which I believe is psychological for me because I'm coming out of a dormancy in the spring and there is this feeling of like, all right, this is it. Mm-hmm. Right. Versus, can you imagine like running a um, a marathon 26.2 miles and you know kind of you hit the wall if you hit a wall it's going to be at like mile 20 can you be, imagine being told yeah. at mile 20 you got a whole other race to run you know <laughs> like you know like you, you're pulling yourself together basically to finish this thing and finish strong as we used to say um but no wait hold on no no wait you're not, I mean, this is a finish line, but it's not the finish line. Right. So that's sometimes how um, the fall has has felt. If I had been growing in these three seasons for all of my garden years, I'm sure I'd be in a different place. And I'm sure in the future I will be in a different place. But right now I'm still trying to get the groove together when it comes to all the things that are going on in my garden, in my kitchen. Um, and it almost becomes this, uh, you know, I'm, I want to be an a-hole here, but it's almost like it's a burden. Yeah. No, it is because you're taking your your eye off the prize, mm-hmm. and so it's like one of them you feel like because you're you're trying. It's like having you know five kids. Somebody's gonna fall through the cracks at some point, you know, and that's just the fact of the matter. You know, I um I was just counting in my head. I spend more time in my year planting seeds than I do growing and harvesting vegetables in my garden. I spend one month more starting seeds than I do anything else. Are you That's talking about like man hours? No, just like months out no. of the year okay, that okay. I do it. Yeah. So if you think about it like that, um, that's crazy. You know, that's how important this is to my garden, you know. And the fact is in the fall, 
I keep telling myself, you know, well, it's okay. There's, you know, I can always go get some starts if I need to. And, you know, I've been on this path of like no starts, no starts, Mm -hmm. no starts. Mm -hmm. And so this year I actually am starting a whole bunch of flower seeds as well. So that just kind of adds on to it. So it's going to be difficult, which I got some banger seeds from my pollinator garden. More to come on that in a future episode, hopefully. Um, so, you know, it's it's a it's a constant thing. And then letting that fall through the cracks, you you come up short in the fall season, which in my mind, and it's just like you said, there is no leeway mm-hmm. in starting that fall garden, at least for me. And I know for you, it's a hard stop. Yeah, the the part that um I have enough regular food, so I, I probably won't have bok choy, which I was really look, looking forward to. But something as simple as lettuce, which I can grow even still now, lettuce, but nothing is going to come to size. Mm-hmm. Um, I can grow spinach. What I'm going to be doing now is subbing in things that will be do well with the time I have left versus planting out what I really wanted. Yeah. You know, so it's a little bit of sacrifice. I'm actually going to go back and argue that taking my eye off the ball isn't coming in to sow seeds instead of looking at the garden or working in the garden. It is not sowing the seeds because the ball really is the idea of getting as much as I can out of my garden. Right. And I told you it's hot in here. So stop getting me all amped up. I felt myself like, you know, my temperature rising. Well, let me let me bring you down a notch. So for me. One of mine is just me being stubborn Mm. and really digging my heels in hard. Um, And I'm not ashamed to admit it. This one I'm not ashamed for. I can admit when I was wrong. Um, I went this year and I switched to in-ground watering. I I built a drip system. Um, I custom built it. I did not buy a pre-made package, which is what I had done in the past, which did not work for me. And I did. It's worked out extremely well but the years that i didn't do it i truly suffered from not embracing it and Mm. part of that wasn't me not embracing it part of it was not knowing how to do it myself but once i figured it out i was just doing a video um I did two videos. I did one about what I'm planting in September. And then I did another one about what we expect to harvest in September. And in that video, I I went over and I was like, these are, you know, I expect to still get cucumbers from my original cucumber plants. And I shot them some fertilizer a couple weeks ago and they just, they rebounded. They started growing again. They've gone off one trellis onto another one. And um, they're not ate up with disease. And the only thing that I can put towards that is the fact that I have not been overhead watering consistently or at all with it. And therefore I do not have the disease problems that I've had in the past being powdery mildew and stuff like that, which will kill your plants. But for years I expected, and I don't, this is very early, so it'll take another year or two before I really figure out if that's the case. Um, But I expected to totally be done with it to the point in which I went out there a month ago and replanted seeds under the cucumbers to try and get another growth of them. So that being said, like that was a big problem that I had created for myself over Mm -hmm. the years. And I spent, I mean, we've talked about it on the podcast before. I have spent so much time trying to rig up different systems and everything, overhead watering and all that stuff. And it really this year, I kind of figured out that like I was getting in my own way doing that. I mean, I feel like, you know, if I would have known we were going to lay on the couch on this episode. <laughs> hey, that's, that's what uh, this is about. That's pretty deep there, man. I think um, I think it's encouraging. Well, you, you're not ready to say it with 100% certainty. I think it's encouraging the bit around maybe um, less disease you've experienced um, because I have now, of course, my hand watering is different than your, you know, (laughs) your drip irrigation, right? You know, so there's a whole level of time that I'm spending versus you. Um, But I have continued to be concerned around running the sprinkler in my garden, right? Mm -hmm. Great time savings. But I've done it once this year for like a three-day period. And I felt like I came back home to disease. 
Right. And fortunately, mm-hmm. I've managed and it. It was early enough in the season where it isn't kind of just some of the things you run into later in the season. Um, so I, I'm not ready to full on say, like, if I would have kept on running the sprinklers, I would be pulling off plants. Uh, but I am. There is something there, I believe there. Um, but I mean, I think that not giving up on getting that watering bit right is something that I've been impressed. Right. You know, like, all right. OK. okay. So it didn't work exactly like I thought it was going to work. I'm going to try this different thing. And right now you feel like this is the thing. Right. This is the, your approach now. Is it? Yeah. So it's it's and right now in this exact moment, it's really working out because I need to water my fall seedlings that I have in almost every day to keep them cool. Mm-hmm. But I have my tomatoes right next to them and I can just turn off the water there and I'm not watering them if I don't need to. And not to mention the fact that I ran it into the greenhouse. So remember last year when I was worried my soil would be hydrophobic, I've consistently been watering it just with everything else. Mm-hmm. So I should have you know, decent soil in there when I go to replant again. So, you know, but I have gone through many iterations anywhere from making, you know, sprinkler systems with irrigation heads to sprinklers themselves. And what I did is I eliminated hoses running all over the place in Mm -hmm. my way. And it's made it a lot cleaner and easier for me to maneuver around and maintain. So, but you know, that stubbornness that I had to go through, it was, it was, it was tough. And it was it was a difficult thing to deal with, especially now that I'm like, damn, I should have done this years ago. But <laughs> there was definitely a monetary cost to go into it. So that 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 is an issue. Well, yeah, that, I think that, you know, we're probably slower to to pull that that trigger when it comes to if it's going to cost X, Y, Z. You know, so I know it was an investment for what you're doing here. And that's just an example of how sometimes we can be stubborn in the garden. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think that um, not facing the troubles that I know I have year over year in the garden has continued to set me back. Um, so, you know, some of the pest pressure that I've had this year has actually so far been a pretty easy year, all things considered, but I've done things where it's like, okay, I know I'm going to have a trouble with uh, even beyond pest pressure. This is a good example between my neighbor's fence and my fence. We get these wild vines that grow and, I first saw them and I'm like, oh, that's kind of whimsical. They're all on the cage, baby. And it's it's all kind of like, like it reminds you of Ivy, but it's not Ivy. And so then a couple of days ago, I got a mess, text message from my neighbor. Like, you know that there's a wire coming from the alley to your house that's wrapped up in the vines. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, I, I see it every day. Right. But it's sitting like six feet tall. And so I wasn't paying that close of attention to it. And so originally when I saw it, I thought... I should cut that back. Then I thought whimsical. Then it's like I blinked overnight and it's swallowing the cage baby. Right. Mm-hmm. And the important thing is, I mean, I'm pretty sure this is an electrical wire. And now these vines are weighing down that wire. So now in the hottest week of the month, I'm like, I got to climb up on a ladder to cut these wires between the cage baby and um, the, the wire itself. So maybe procrastination, like not dealing with a thing like head on is probably something that and I'm just going to go ahead and call it it's going to hurt me next year too yeah. <laughs> like, um, there are things that I've walked by and I said uh, you know stop now and do and most times I do it but there's some times where I'm just like oh I'll get back to it and never to return until it's a problem has there ever been like do you ever do that with like replanting something like you're like okay I need to replant and you just never you just don't get around to doing it and then by the time it comes up, you're like, damn, I'm, you know, I should have done this two weeks ago. Yeah. The, um, and there's a bit of confidence, a confidence issue there. You know, it's like, remember that with the asparagus, you know, like you knew better. I, I watched mm-hmm. it and said, no, this isn't right. But I said, okay, well, maybe I just don't know how to grow asparagus. And I don't know how to grow asparagus, but what I watched wasn't right. Um, I've done that with cucumbers are a great example. I had such a hard time with cucumbers this year, such poor production. And so I direct sowed about four seeds, six seeds or something. And I looked up and they all had come up. And then I looked up again. It was like only two plants left. Right. And in that moment, I should have sown more. So this is my second chance at cucumbers. And so in that moment, I should have... um, sown more and guess where i sowed them where in the midst of my sweet potato patch 
<laughs> and you know those are that's like dead man walking like anything growing near that uh, so I ended up digging up one of the surviving cucumber plants and moving it to the other side of the bed but there's one more that's going to be intertwined with other sweet potatoes are likely going to choke out the cucumber so I say that to say one it wasn't a great space to put it in but I would have had a better shot if I would have planted more seeds in your example when I realized I'm sure the roly polies had eaten you know four out of the six seedlings yeah and I mean that's and it, it, that goes right into it too because when you see that and I know that I need to replace it, mm-hmm. but I don't sometimes. And then by the time I get to it, it's, you know, the time's passed. I'm like, damn, I, I could have had two, three weeks of growth on this thing. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You exactly. know, it's like this year. Um, now, I, I will give myself a little bit of grace, but this year I did my um, potatoes and then I let my bed sit dormant for a month when I could have put a cover crop in there and revitalized the soil or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't do it. Now, that being said, that was my first year. This is my first year really monocropping beds. So it's been a learning curve. But moving forward, like I take that and I know like, hey, maybe I should do something a little bit different. Maybe I should try and grow something, you know, buckwheat, something like that, just to get a quick crop in there to help revitalize the soil. So, you know, there's options. But, you know, I procrastinated on that. And it's 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 tough. And I feel like a lot of people might do that too because it's that time of year where it's like it's almost it I don't I'm trying to think of how to put it. It's so nice outside and everything else is growing that you're just like, "Eh, I'll get to it." Forgive this analogy, but it's like you have two teenage kids and now you're expecting another kid and it's like, "Wait, hold on." It's th- they're almost 18. Yeah. Now, what? A newborn? You know? Yeah. Like, uh, that's, you go through that every season. And no, I'm not trying to, you know, equate children to plants. Uh, but you're, you're going through that every season because you have things that are at their full maturity. And now you have to come in and sometimes pretty, in pretty close proximity deal with something that has wholly different needs. Yeah. You know? It's crazy to think about. Yeah. So, um, after all of that procrastination, definitely the thing. Now, I'll say something that I've really fought with um, over the years is being too involved in my garden and trying to change the way of it. Mm. And what I mean by that specifically is like over amending soils sometimes mm-hmm. and really like interjecting myself and just being like, you know what? Don't worry about it. You know, they got this. It's got this. This is what plants do. They grow, you know, adding one year I added too much compost. Um, One year I put in too many wood chips. Um, Another year um, early, early into my gardening game, I put hot chicken manure in there. When I mean hot, I mean it wasn't aged. So it just basically burned up my garden. Mm -hmm. I've done that, you know, and really what I need to do is just take it down a notch, you know, maybe mix in just some basic topsoil and not get so damn technical with it. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. um, I noticed this a lot with comments and emails and stuff like that. We get that there's a lot of people that, and it's natural, I think to get too technical with what we're doing and growing food and stuff when it's like, the plant's going to take care of itself and nature is going to run its course. I mean, you should definitely help out when you can, but over concern. And we've done shows about like what methods and different techniques and stuff like that. And I mean, I feel like it's just like, for me, it's like, take a, take a chill pill, relax. You know, you don't have to get your hands on every single plant all the time, trim away and cut away and do something. Sometimes it's just best to let it do its thing and let it grow and see what happens. And basically also learn the lesson that can come from that. Yeah. Once you're giving too much attention to a thing, you're definitely not paying attention to another three. Yeah. Yeah. I used to have a boss, um, when I was a mechanic back in the day and I would try and be very helpful and he would tell me, he's like, man, you're helping me to death, you know, like back (laughs) off, you're helping me to death. And it's, it's true. You know, you can, Mm -hmm. you can help too much, you know, you can overfeed, over fertilize. Um, there was one year 
I think it was my squash last year where I get I basically would feed everything the same way. So I'd give it the same fertilizing regimen and that included adding blood meal to everything. Well, what happened was I gave it too much nitrogen. So I was just producing leaves constantly and not giving it a chance to do anything else. So, you know, you can see like within this time frame, like I had overhelped my garden, what I thought I was doing right, but I really wasn't doing anything right. I was, I was hurting it. What do you think led you to that though? A little bit of ignorance, a little bit of laziness, like, oh, it just works here. Let me do it for everything, you know? And if you go back this year and you watch some of my videos, you can clear I say it many times, like I feed this plant this way, but I'm not going to put this in here. And then I'll do another bed and I'll say, I'm going to add this and this. And so that allows me to switch it up a bit, you know, um, I haven't, you know, feeding at the wrong times, you know, mm-hmm. we've, we've had heat wave after, after heat wave, after heat wave. And in return, I have not fed my garden much at all because I know that I don't want to be pushing growth in these middle of these heat waves. But as the heat breaks and I start feeding more and I did it with my cucumbers this year and boom, when you know it, I got cucumbers all over the place now. So it's really worked out in my favor to kind of back off, let that knowledge sink in and push it through when it's time and everything works out for the better. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I just did a video about that. It spoke about that. It's like, so, you know, going into a heat spell. It's, um, and this isn't necessarily something that sets me back, but this is, it lines up to what you're describing, kind of copying and paste, pasting, like just doing the same thing and repeating it mm-hmm. and thinking that it's like a one size fit all. You yeah. Know? And it's absolutely not. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I can yeah. tell you that I had a similar situation with my bees this year. So, um, my bees swarmed. The queen left. I needed a queen. I bought a queen. I put it in. And wouldn't you know, before I had done that, they had made their own queen. And I basically burn up $42. Mm-hmm. I mean, I put it in and they killed the queen probably minutes after she got out. Oh, wow. But okay. they had already taken care of business. And so I over interjected myself. But that was complete ignorance on my part because I didn't understand what I was doing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, um... I, I think that even if we would have a full year, like every year just starts the clock over again, I think that we'd still do some of the things that we do, you know, that kind of set us back or, or create some issue. But I do recognize that there is this feeling of like, you got one chance, you got two chances. Like now yeah. you have two chances with your tomatoes and this is it, right? Um, I think that I sometimes experience a little bit of the dog chasing the car. Like what happens when he catches it? Yeah. <laughs> and so there's some things like the things that I'm getting very few of have become prized possessions. Like I've not made any pickles yet because I've enjoyed fresh cucumbers as fresh cucumbers. Mm-hmm. And I think at this point I've just become comfortable with this is what it's going to be. Yeah. You know, I'll think about how often in the year I'm eating cucumbers that are not that. Um, and generally speaking, my cute, my pickles are probably better than most pickles that I'm buying, but it is what it is. Um, but tomatoes are a good example. Like the garden gods have blessed me. (laughs) And so now I'm looking at my dining room table, like, you know, and so I've been in such a panic around, um, losing tomatoes that I've been picking them really early. Right. Or, I mean, they're not fully ripe on the vine, which, again, I believe is fine. But now I have to have a whole system in my house for what's like ripe. What's ripe, ripe versus what needs many days to ripen. Right. right? And so <laughs> I've created a bit more work for myself. Right. Instead of leaving things on the plants, um, which is a way instead, you know, easier to manage. I still believe if I had to do it over again, I would do it over again. But I didn't react uh, quick enough when it, I haven't lost anything yet, fortunately, uh, but didn't react quick enough as it relates to, oh, be confident. You are going to get tomatoes this year. All right. So what's the plan? Like, I, I'm like, I know there are a couple of things I want to make, 
but sh- at this volume, I need like five more recipes, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, bought that's... deal twice from the store and it's like, oh, but you still like the cucumbers are coming. It's like, no, they aren't. That's, a dis- that's an aside. You know, that's where we're, we were at is, I mean, we had a we've had a really good tomato year this year to the point of where we put back, I think is like six or seven tomato pies and probably mm-hmm. 10 cans of tomatoes, which is about what we need for a year. Mm-hmm. And we've got probably another half of our tomato harvest to come. And, you know, one thing I will say on the preservation note is I have been guilty in the past of over preserving mm-hmm. and not enjoying things as fresh as I should, you know? So, um, and also, when it comes down to planning, planning things almost too rigorously for preserving and then coming up in the middle of the season, be like, I wish I had this variety for a different reason. You know, we did. Yeah. Um, th- yeah. This was the first year that we did all Romas, basically. And it's come up a few times where I was like, I wish I had a slicing tomato available to us. And I don't have one. I mean, I do, but it's not. I have one plant, so it's not able to keep up with what we want. So it's like, you know, that's kind of. It's not really set back my garden, but it set me back personally. That's the grass is not. It's you know not greener though because I today before we we jumped on here I thought to myself, um, and you you got to go through it to know it. There are a couple of tomato varieties that I should have just skipped. Yeah. So the brandy wine, not brandy wine that I thought I planted that could have been a mortgage lifter. Like I could not plant either of those. What I believe to be the mortgage lifter is in a, in a um, the soil isn't as rich. So that may be attributing to the performance, but it is just pitiful. So I looked and said, I really should have. I've had two spots where I could have planted Romas. Right. Like respect for the Roma. Yeah. Um, so there is that. Um, and I think that there's this piece of not necessarily, like, how should I say this? Like it's, it's the kind of waiting to see what you get before you make the plan. Right. You know, so a part of the waiting to see what happens with the plants before I decide what I want to grow for fall. There's a little bit of like what happens with my summer crops and when I'm pulling things out that we're going to influence what I planted for fall. That's a faulty plan for me in my garden. Yeah. Right. You know, um, I think that, you know, the tomatoes are a little bit different. It is a little bit of like, wait to see what I get to determine when I'm going to make this, that and the other. Um, and I'm on the cusp of, I can continue to write the ship because it is going off course now right. or i could be stuck yeah and i mean yeah i've been stuck because it got to a point where it's like i want this but there's no point in starting a seed you know mm-hmm, i'm just wasting mm-hmm. my time so it's like i'll just wait till next year mm-hmm. um you know it's it's the same thing now i <clears throat> one thing that has set my garden back which i didn't think would was me not um monocropping my garden beds Um, that has led to higher production in my garden and more ease in a sense, more ease of planning as I figure it out, because I know what's going in here and I know when it's done, it's done and it's empty. And then I can go put something else in. So there is that now what it has led to is me realizing that I need to have a bigger garden to grow what I want to grow. So I do need to kind of build on that as well. But, you know, I thought about it for years and years. And I remember <clears throat> last year, I, I hadn't really, I wasn't really considering it. And I remember I had a bed and I had like tomatoes and squash in it. And the squash just sucked. You know, it was the year I over fertilized with nitrogen, got nothing but leaves. And when I pulled up my squash, I was like, what do I put in its place? You know, I still have this here. I have this tomato here that's doing this, all these different things. And it made it overly complicated. And then this year when I pulled up my potatoes and instantly I was like, wait, I have a whole bed. I can do whatever I want in it. It it started to make sense to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so it makes it. And so the way it hurt my garden 
if you want to really get down to the nitty gritty and if you suit choose so to believe is like companion planting and all that stuff like i don't have to worry about that now because everything that's going in the bed is the same yeah i i feel like i need to add an asterisk on your behalf please do Just, i feel like you know, year one and year two probably will continue to benefit you. But just keep in mind that you're asking something of your soil that you have it in previous years with the intensity of insert crop name in that one space. Um, so I know that you follow a bunch of different practices that should help compensate for that. Um, yeah. Monocropping is a, a bad word in certain circles. Um, based on impacts on the environment and such. And, and the monocropping in those examples are like single crop. You know, so right. I definitely get what we're doing is different. Um, but it's the best way to describe it when we talk about it. So I get that. Um, I just I just don't want your little garden heart to be broken. <laughs> you know what? My <laughs> garden heart's been broken so many times in my life. It is just fine. It can take it. But I mean, if you think about it, though, you plant... You know, sweet potatoes in, they use a certain nutrient. And then if you plant it right and you put something else different, it uses a different nutrient, you know, mostly. Mm -hmm. Then it makes it a little bit easier on the soil is the thought process. So over time, we'll figure out. But I knew that I needed to go to something like that. And I can look back at different iterations of my garden over the years and see how I would like would slowly every so often like certain beds would get more into that mode. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. So, that's where I stand with that. Yeah, I think that, um, I think that this year I found a fair balance, but not maybe the most ideal balance against kind of throwing caution to the wind and just saying, okay, again, we're going to see what happened and then not. Um, I think that if I had to guess, and if you ask me again, the number is going to change. I probably followed the plan maybe 70 percent mm -hmm. right but i wasn't 100 percent planned out so there's that too <laughs> you know so like whatever i plan to do i follow that about 70 percent and i do have some regrets about the other 30 percent um generally speaking i am thrilled let me just let me pull my tone up and forgive me as i'm waning i'm sliding down in my seat because it's so hot in here <laughs> <laughs> but i couldn't I could be more thrilled, but I'm super thrilled with how the garden season has progressed. Um, I have some, you know, someone call like a zucchini that got too big, a whoopsie. Oh, we got a couple of whoopsies. Um, like I have some whoopsies throughout my garden that are not zucchini, but are just, you know, oh, you know. Yeah. Um, and again, some of those go back to the earlier comment of like going against my better judgment. Uh, my sweet corn is a good example of that. So disappointing. The beautiful wild violet sweet corn. I missed the window. We talked about this explicitly. Yeah. You know? That sucks. And I was checking, checking the kernels and I came back in and I'm like, oh, I know what bad corn looks like when it's kind of, you know, indented and, and looks a little bit dry. And I'm like, oh, no, I got one ear of corn that I was able to eat and enjoy normally. And I think I have one more. I pulled all of them um, this morning. So I will check to see if there's anything that's salvageable. Now, the only fortunate part is it was such a small space. I don't feel like I've lost a lot. Right. Other than like I was super excited about growing this particular variety again this year. Um, so that's one of those weird things because it went bad on my watch. Like I, <laughs> I didn't look up and then it went bad. No, I kept on checking it, uh, and and then now it's like, oh no, wait, no. <laughs> I got one more shot with sweet corn though. Let's see what the front yard garden does. Oh, you got some going out there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I should have replanted mine, but I decided not to. And I, I mean, on sweet corn, I wasted a whole bed on that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I ate one ear raw, and that was all I got. You know, mm -hmm. otherwise it's just, but it, it, it's a learning curve, you know? Yep. And I think that's another thing it's an opportunity too. for you to take that, you know, take the loss and the win because the win is going to be whatever you do going forward, which right. is kind of where I want to transition to. We didn't talk about this arm of it because there is a bit of Debbie Downing around here. Are yeah. there any of all of these things, anything that you already know you plan on doing differently to address it? Well, I was just going to, what, the corn? 
Oh, no, just in general. Oh, yeah. Well, I was going to say something about the corn, you know. Taking that loss, taking the L, and just being like, yep, it is what it is. And then just being like, I've never planted it again. You don't really gain anything from that. But I don't look at it as a loss because now I know. I know that I need to plant more corn. I need to get consistent germination and really be on top of it and not sit on my butt and wait and probably plant it a little bit later when it's a little bit warmer. Mm -hmm. And that will help, you know. So these are all things that I've taken from that experience and will grow on it. It's just like this Brussels sprouts, man. How many years have you watched me try and fight to grow Brussels sprouts? And here we are once again. All of the years. All of the years. And I'm not going to stop. I'm going to continue to the point this year where I have a full bed of Brussels sprouts. So I'm going to do my best, you know, and it's just it's the way I operate. But I, I think I believe that just like walking away from it and throwing your hands in the air, which I've done in the past, can really kind of set you back in the long run and really narrow you down to what you grow. I have a picture in my phone, maybe a video. And as I took the video, I I think actually maybe I, it's my voice in it saying this thing is in hospice. It was clear that uh, the yellow squash plant that I had in a container in the front yard had been eaten into. Right. And I'm just like, well, it's only a matter of time. And guess what popped up a few days later? The first squash. and maybe the only yellow squash in my garden. There you and go. it's wild because I could have just said, let me just yank this thing right now. And I look up a couple of days later and there's a squash. And it's so funny how, you know, our minds work. I honestly could take or leave yellow squash. I just think it speaks summer. Right. I had, yeah. you know, some plants. And so I said, why not? And I am so excited about that yellow squash. I decided to give it one more day. And no matter what size it is tomorrow, I'm cutting it. I'm going to take <laughs> I'm going to walk with my coffee in the morning to the plant. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to take my coffee cup directly back inside with my yellow squash. And I'm going to fry that thing in the skillet and I'm going to have it for breakfast. (laughs) And you're going to enjoy it. It's been years in the making, man. (laughs) So what were you asking me before I got onto the, well, I, I just generally, I think that um, you, in part you answered it as it relates to the corn. Like for all of these things we've been talking about, like we we're talking about how they set us back. But <clears throat> so what's the plan to not be in the same space next season in fall or next year? Yeah, I think, you know, I think it's a really good practice to kind of set yourself up with a multi-year plan. You know, what are the certain things that you can fix at certain times, you know? It can get really overwhelming to be like, all right, next year, I'm going to redo my watering system, plant corn better, get more squash, you know, and the next thing you know, you got 20 different things you're trying to do. And I mean, I like the idea of like, hey, what was I satisfied with and what do I want to improve with and what do I need to totally change? And then just kind of dabble with a little bit of all those. Come on, somebody. Where are they at? Where's that somebody at? (laughs) What about you? I mean, I love that outlook. Um, I think the only thing right now that this is, you know, we're into multiple years of this that I'm willing to commit to is even if it's six seeds, one single sale, I just need to get into the habit of starting seeds same day every month. Routine like that matters to me. Yeah. Um, and, you know, loosey goosey, whether I have a camera on or not, you know, don't let that slow you down. Start something every month. It doesn't have to be a project, Batavia. You hear me, Batavia? Yes, I hear I mean, you, how long does it take to put soil into a container and throw a seed in it? I could have had a whole seed tray started as we've been talking. But yeah. a single a single set of seeds and it doesn't. So there again, there's a part of this where it's less about getting the thing from the garden to or from the the seed sale to the garden it's more of getting into the habit right that's what i'm struggling with right now yeah um so i make coffee every morning i didn't have coffee this morning it's like the first morning in eons but i make coffee every morning add it to the routine you know what i would say i would say starting tomorrow tomorrow's the day that's it it's starting tomorrow end of story no, I would say, um, you know, the, it really comes down and what you're talking about is just having a solid plan and executing it. You know what I mean? But like, 
How many of us have have said, you know, okay, I have space for 10 tomato plants and then you end up with 30 tomato plants Mm -hmm. and you're like, well, what do I do with the rest of them? You know what I mean? Like, it just doesn't make sense. So I started a bunch, I started a tray of seeds. It was 162 trays of seeds of flowers. I didn't have a place to put them. You know what happened to that, that tray of seeds? They all burn up and died because I didn't know mm-hmm. where I was going to put them. I just kind of was like, oh, mm-hmm. okay. I started seeds and I wasted them. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of, you know, it's an issue. So what are you going to do about that? Start uh, less? Find no. a place to, for them? I need to have a plan. You yeah, know, okay. I need to I need to take, because there's some things I want to do with flowers next year, and I need to sit down and actually make a plan. You know, I've started that process, but I need to kind of like sketch it out and figure out what I want to do. Um, and then just go from there, you know, and I can start, you can always start a couple extras, but there's no point in starting, you know, 50 if you only need three. It just doesn't make so, sense. Snapdragons are one of my favorites. You know, I got a bunch of favorites, but they're like, please no one recount them for me. They're in the top five. Right. And... um once they're mature, they can they can take a, a beating from the cold weather. And so I bought some Snapdragons la- this year. And so they sat on my deck for a bunch of time and dried out. And so I, it's, I've not given up on a lot of my seedlings because I still got flowers, summer flowers on my deck. I know folks are out here buying mums and whatnot, but I still got summer flowers. I still got petunias on my deck at the time of this recording. So anywho, um, I think taking your approach of, and I'm not starting um, Snapdragons now. I'm looking at next year. Taking your approach of, you just can't have a list of 20 things you're going to do better and do differently and all of that. I think flowers, I actually have a whole seed, um, seed starting tray, not tray, but um, shelf unit that I originally bought and stood up a symbol for the purpose of flowers. It's never been full of flowers. But I think that it's okay for now that it's not, you know, and instead snapdragons bring me joy, pure joy. So the ones that, you know, were looking dead on my back porch, I cut them back, I planted them out, and they are such a pretty yellow and and, and white color right now. And they're one of the first things I see when I walk out. And so that's a moment of, I know the joy they're going to bring me. Go ahead and focus on that if nothing else for flowers next year. Yep. There'll be other things I focus on, but that's manageable. Yeah. They are slow growers too. So you got to get in there early. <clears throat> yeah. I, I'm aware of that with snapdragons. I've had the same one for a couple of years now and it comes and goes, oh, cool. comes and goes, comes and goes mm-hmm. some waves right now. We're in the top of the wave, but we're going to slide down the face of it soon. <laughs> but that being said, now that we have digressed into flowers, we need to go on to the listener question of the day. What do you think, Batavia? But before we do, I need to take a second and tell you guys about this wonderful app called the Planter app. It's a longtime supporter of the show. Great app. Has thousands of varieties to choose from. Square foot gardening design, drag and drop interface. You can do it on your phone. You can do it on your tablet and you can use it on your PC, whatever you want, whatever real estate you want. You want to plant a garden on the go? Pull out your phone. You want to get down and dirty? Do it on your desktop. It's all good. It's got calendars. It has growing guides, customizable interface. It's a lot of fun to do, especially if you're a garden dork like us. I mean, can't go wrong with planting multiple gardens have multiple designs saved year to year tells you companion planting combative planting seed starting times it basically you name it and it's got it this is a planter app you can use a link below for a discount and you can get it on amazon or not excuse me not amazon android or apple and it's spelled p-l-a-n-t-e-r the planter app Now, we have a Spotify question, okay? And if you guys are new to the show and you have a question you want answered on the air, you can leave it to to us anywhere you want and just put Spotify question in front of it. That's like a thing now. But Spotify has given us this where 
that you can leave a question, but we have no way to answer it on Spotify. So we figure, you know what? Screw you guys. We're going to do it on the air. <laughs> so um, you can do that there. You can leave it on our YouTube channels or on our Facebook page, wherever you want to go. Um, I'm going to say this name and I don't know if I'm saying it wrong and I am apologize ahead of time. Eric says, asks, when do you plant garlic and onions in 8A and how do you care for them over the winter? But since you have somebody in 8A and somebody in a zone somewhere between 5B and 6B, we'll just have to leave that one up in the air. I figure we can give you both. And then everybody can be covered, right? Yeah. Yeah. The so when you are, are right up the uh, your alley too. I saw a post recently regarding onion starts. Yeah. So um, we're taking orders for onion starts. We had we sold two thousand onion starts last year. That's <laughs> it's wild. crazy. It's crazy. People <laughs> love them. Um, what, what? When do you start your garlic? Um, it said last week of September up through the beginning of November. I'm in Chicago, Illinois, uh, and my garden zone is six A like apple. <laughs> 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 uh, so we get down to temps like you know it, it estimated at like five degrees below zero. Um, although that hasn't been our experience in recent years. Now I say all that to say the years I've planted garlic, it's this is the this will be the fourth year that I've grown planted garlic and the third year coming up that I've actually harvested successfully. I had a great harvest this year. I planted it at like I think it was after Thanksgiving. I wouldn't make that a practice. Our ground had not frozen and the garlic cloves had a chance to establish themselves and begin to root before the ground froze. So in an area like mine where you will have this ground freezing over, that's really important. Um, a more ideal time is in October. And what about onions? Onions, uh, my uh, extension service says, I believe, mid-April to mid-May for onions. I planted my onion transplants, transplants, on May 15th, actually. Um, and so they want you to have like transplants or sets for that date range. So that probably put me starting onions like in February, I'd say. And care for them over the winter? <gasps> oh, I thought you were making fun of how I killed all of my onion transplants. No. Uh, <laughs> so for me, um, plant uh, the garlic, mulch it heavy water it when you plant it and then i do nothing over the winter when we come into early spring and they start to show um, the green stalks i will move aside the mulch and i've been using straw um, but i imagine a number of things can work um, i'll move aside the mulch and then i'll fertilize um, i'll do like a a bone meal and maybe a little bit of all-purpose granular fertilizer and then I kind of water it as I do the rest of my garden in the spring, which is not often. Um, I've only had one real good year of growing onions, so I don't want to pretend like yeah, I know more than I know <laughs> on that. Uh, but once I planted those out, we were getting into the warmer bit. So I'd probably look to plant my onions next year closer to that mid-April period versus mid-May. Um, and those are heavy feeders. So I did fertilize when I planted, but I didn't fertilize afterwards. I yeah. did a good job at keeping them watered, but that'd be the thing I do differently. So I'm not growing onions over the winter. And hard neck or soft neck garlic? Garlic for me, either will work in my area, hard neck or soft neck. I think generally because I get the byproduct of the garlic scapes for hard neck, yeah. it's become a preference. I've only grown about maybe six different varieties. So there's, you know, a gazillion of them. Um, so there could be other soft necks that I, I would like, but haven't yeah. found them yet. So I'm in zone 8A in North Carolina, and I grow soft neck garlic. I grow garlic that I saved from the grocery store. So I do not buy garlic online for $30. I bought all I need for $4. Um, then if you do that, they say make sure you buy organic because it doesn't have anything sprayed on it. I don't know if that matters, but it's easy enough to buy. So um, I do that. I plant my garlic right around Thanksgiving. And 
it, what I do is I actually put my garlic in the refrigerator about, say, middle October to Halloween. I'll put it in the refrigerator just to ensure that it gets that chill time because there is a chance that we will not really get a chill time. So we can do that. Um, as long as you leave it in there, I think last year I only left it in for like seven to 10 days and it worked out absolutely fine, but I'd like to do two to three weeks, I think. And then I plant it in my furrow. I put, um, fertilizer and stuff just enough to get it going through the winter. And then I water it one time and then I don't water it anymore. So I don't water it now, you know, Basically, I might water it once a month if we're not getting any rain throughout the winter. And around the same time, what I do is I start my onion seeds. And so I grow um, Valdelia, the sweet short day onions. In my area, we can get away with the intermediate day, but I do the short day onions. And I'll start those by seed around Thanksgiving, 1st of December. Um, I start those. And then as they grow in the trays... I trim them, I give them haircuts, cut them back. Once they get about six inches, I'll cut them back to three inches. And then I'll just keep doing that over and over. Uh, Keep them watered well. And then once I harden them off, I've even started them in my unheated greenhouse last year. And they did did pretty good. They didn't do as good as the ones inside, but they did pretty good. And so I'll go out there around the middle of January and I put them in the ground and I feed them. Um, I just go ahead and put my granular fertilizers in. I'll put blood meal, nitrogen, super important. And I'll put a balanced fertilizer in at the same time in the furrow. Uh, water them in. I do not mulch. I mulch my garlic, but I do not mulch my onions. So I'll leave them there. And then as soon as it starts to warm up, which for us, it can be like middle of February, we'll start getting warm days. I start feeding them and I'll start feeding them um, heavy nitrogen. Got to get, don't trim the tops when they go in the ground or anything, grow them up, they'll get big. And then once they start bulbing, I stop feeding them completely and just keep water to them constantly. Water, water, water. I don't ring my onions. I don't cut away the soil, nothing like that. I just let them push the soil out and make their onions. I'll be just fine. Um, the one mistake I made last year is I planted them in the same bed, my onions and garlic, and I planted my garlic in front of my onions where the sun hits and the garlic actually shaded my onions. So I'll be putting my garlic in the back bed because I only needed to do one row of a one eight foot row, which is 32 heads of garlic. That's all I need for the year, basically. And then the rest of that bed will just all be um, onions. And then I harvest them right around the same time, like around June. I get my garlic first and then my onions, when the tops fall over, you're done. So pull them up and dry them. And I've been eating Valdelia onions all summer. (laughs) Super easy. Um, the only thing downside behind onions is they are in your garden the longest out of any crop that you grow Mm -hmm. and they don't start to bulb until they hit the right amount of sunlight. Is it like one of those hundred day crops? Dude, if I, well, I mean, if you think about it, I put them in in January, I start them in December and I harvest them in June. So that's 180 days. But what else do I have going on in the wintertime in my garden? (laughs) You know what I mean? So if you'd like to leave us a question, you can definitely leave it to us on Spotify and we will attempt to answer it if we can. You can leave it to us on my Facebook or YouTube page at Sandy Bottom Homestead, Batavia's at Be Better Garden, or you can hit us up on Facebook on our community page at the Backyard Gardens Community Garden. Got it. And then we will get it, put it in line to answer. And we may, because we're starting to get a little backed up, we may end up just doing a show where we just answer all of the questions for a certain period. So... Keep your ears peeled for that. And on that note, once you decide to support us on Spotify or Apple, then just know one thing. We have learned to grow and we've grown for change. Did you say we have a MySpace page or no? I don't think I did. I hope I didn't. All right. See ya. (laughs) Now you know why people feel like celebrating at harvest time. 
All over the world, people have feasting and good times when the crops have been gathered in. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out the Backyard Gardens podcast. If you like what we're doing and you want to continue to support the podcast, head over to our Patreon page to sign up. You can also make a one-time donation using PayPal. Both of these links are in the description. With your support, we can continue growing and helping others in their gardens. See ya. If you guys want some Backyard Gardens gear, go to the link below and check out our t-shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and other gear. All purchases go towards helping to support the show, so thank you so much in advance, and we hope you enjoy. We want everybody to have a garden, and we're going to give you a chance to win free seeds every month. Head over to BackyardGardensTV.com and enter your email address to be entered in all of our giveaways. Good luck! We want you to be a part of our gardening community. DM us a picture of your garden at Backyard Gardens TV on Instagram, and we will share it with our listeners.